This is Canada Reads American Style, featuring two friends who love Canada Reads and Canadian literature. Welcome our host, Rebecca from Michigan and Tara from Ontario. Hi, everyone. It is Rebecca and Tara. And today we have decided to talk about our favorite podcasts and YouTube channels. And I think it'll be a a good thing to talk about because if we want people to follow us, we should also be following people that we really, really like as well. Mm -hmm. So Tara, how's everything going? Good, good. We're having like weird, and I think you're in the same weather where it's like fall, the leaves are changing, but it's gotten really mild this week. It's kind of weird, but nice. But at the same time, I'm just waiting for it to break and to get cold. I don't know. It's October. You never know. I told my mom that I just had read or saw something online or something that said, at least for Michigan, it was going to be higher temperatures than normal and very little precipitation. And I was like, what? Because as you know, winter's my favorite. I want it Mm -hmm. to be cold and I want a crap load of snow. So I'm, I'm hoping that's wrong, you know, but that's what they're saying. So today is a good example of what our, our winter might look like. I don't know. Well, let's hope not. I know. I agree. So what are you reading before we jump into our podcast? What are you reading at the moment? Can I just mention what I did last night? Of course you can. I wasn't sure if you wanted to, if you were going to save it, but yes, please do. I'm jumping right into it. So yesterday I went to see Adam Schultz live in person in London at the Highland Cinema, which was built in the 1930s, which is very cool. And it was a fantastic presentation. First of all, who knew he is so funny in person? You, if you haven't read his books, read his books, go see him live. He's really funny. He showed a lot of images and a video of his latest adventure, which is Where the Falcon Flies. And he did a canoe trip from his home, basically off of Lake Erie, all the way up to uh, Newfoundland. Well, actually through Newfoundland, but then kind of cuts back to Quebec and Ungave Bay. Ungava Bay. Yeah. Anyway, some of the pictures were ones that were not in the book. So that was really fun. Nice. And it was a pretty full house. And there were a lot of, I just loved it, uh, young boys and girls. I loved that. Mm. And some of them had their uniforms on, I think like Boy Scouts or something. Oh, yeah, yeah. But I just loved seeing young people there who probably are really into the outdoors like Adam was at his age and everything. So anyway, had a super fantastic time and we will, or I will be interviewing him soon. We actually were scheduled to do that today. We had some technical glitches. His internet uh, wasn't as strong as it needed to be perhaps. And uh, we're going to do it again very soon, but he is on book tour right now. So I was just thankful a to see him and B to be able to interview him at some point. It's again, it's a thrill. So. And you got to meet him in person last night, too, before the show or before his presentation, right? (laughs) I did, because I'm one of those paranoid people that when I go to a place I've never been before, I like to get there really early. So I got there. The show started at 7, and I got there at 530. And so I just walked in. It's a movie theater. Just I thought, well, I'm just going to sit here and figure out, like, is there going to be a line or how's this going to work? And all of a sudden I see Adam talking to somebody. So I just said, Hey, Adam, I'm Rebecca. And he walked over and, and we chatted and he signed both. I have two copies of his book. I have one signed for me, one signed for you. And I got to just chat with him for a few minutes. So that was just like total fangirl excitement nice. for me. Yeah. I can't believe you were able to get into the theater at 530 that early. I know. But well, the they open. were the thing is they were showing a movie right before his presentation. Oh. So, oh, okay. so they had, you walk in and it had a, you know, candy and popcorn and everything. And yeah. so I just walked in and they, nobody said anything. It's a really tiny little lobby. Yeah. And so I just walked in and sat down and just, like I said, it happened the way it happened. So it was just, it was just a really fun outing. It totally made it especially worthwhile to go from Michigan all the way to London yeah. and have that extra little bit of time that was just, that was really meaningful to me. So it was fun. Sounds like a cool venue, actually. So I will ask you then, what are you reading? (laughs) Okay, I am currently reading uh, The Daughter of Dr. Moreau by Sylvia Marino Garcia. 
just finishing that up within the next day or so. So yeah. So one of my uh, scary reads for October. And is it so far a good October read? It's not scary. I do. Mm-hmm. I do not find find the labeling it as horror. I find kind of odd. I because I do not find it scary. Now there is still like seventy pages left, so I don't know what's going to come in the end. Yeah. Although I think it's just a really good, maybe a little bit gothic, but more like speculative fiction mm-hmm. with some historical background, right? Because I like how she kind of sets them in the historically in a Mexican era or period that I don't know anything about. Yeah. So, yeah, but I wouldn't call it horror. I don't find it scary. Okay. But I am enjoying it. Oh, good. Yeah. What about you? I am reading The Boulevard by Jared Edson, mm-hmm. and this is a book that you've already read and really, really liked, which I know for our next book chat, you will talk about why <laughs> you loved it so much, but I'm, I've just started it. And basically it's about, I guess, would you say just Satan meets up with uh, Ernest Hemingway and Vincent Van Gogh and mm-hmm. about how hell was established or something? Is that kind of the... Yes. Uh, the motivation for it is that Satan has received an email that God oh, is right. coming to he- to hell for like an impromptu visit. That's right. And Satan has to get hell ready because hell is not looking like what God is going to expect it to look like. Because Satan loves beautiful things. Yeah. And from there, it just kind of unrolls and you get the story, a conversation between uh, Satan and Hemingway and Van Gogh comes into it. And, and we, you will be interviewing the author in, for a future podcast. I am. I am like super excited. Yeah. I don't have a date yet, but I've reached out and he has said yes. And now we just got to hook up. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. 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 Okay, well, let's get right into our topic. As we said, our favorite podcasters and YouTubers. And so I hate saying YouTubers because it makes me think of tubers like, you know, um, oh, like a potato. potatoes or something. <laughs> so people who are on YouTube. <laughs> I never thought of that before. <laughs> I, after some, at some point, I will tell you the story about why that is so funny to me, but I am not going to bore our, our listeners for the story, but I will have to tell you that story. Why tubers is such a funny word to me. So anyway, okay. (laughs) YouTube content creators. How's that? That's good. That's very fancy actually. (laughs) Okay. I'll let you go first. (laughs) What's your first one? So I've brought all podcasts with me because I love podcasts. I've been listening to them. I don't know. It's been a long time. Like my oldest is 19 and I've been listening in some form or another to podcasts since like my oldest was a baby. So I, it's been a wow. long time. I, yes. Yeah. I have no idea how I found them or what happened, it's, but I've been listening a long time and I love them. So the first one I'm going to bring to the show is it's a classic Canadian book podcast and it is the next chapter with, uh, of course, the original host with Sheila Rogers. I, want to be Sheila Rogers someday even though I'm like 52 and I probably you know I could just say I am Sheila Rogers like (laughs) anyways original host was Sheila Rogers she retired at the beginning of this past summer so Ryan B. Patrick has been the summer host and at the moment and he's doing a wonderful job he really is like I was so upset when I heard she was retiring because I love her But he's doing a wonderful job just kind of making the show his own. And I think they're expected to name the full-time host later in the year. But it's just a lot of Canadian authors and books. Like if that's what you're interested in, the next chapter is the podcast to listen to for that stuff. And Ryan will not be in the running for it or is this not? I don't know. I don't know if um, he has said that he would only be like, you know, only available for the summer. I really don't know how it's uh, what the process is. Yeah, hmm. but he's doing a great job. You know, and I have to say, I used to religiously listen to the next chapter, mm-hmm. and then what I found, which is the theme of me today talking about podcasts and YouTube channels, is that I have a short attention span. I also, if I get too many book suggestions, I get over, I feel very overwhelmed by them all. And that's what was happening for me with the next uh, chapter, because I loved, love Sheila Rogers. Oh yeah. She was phenomenal. But after every episode, I would just be writing all these books down 
and it just felt overwhelming to me after a certain point. You know what I mean? So yeah. I did stop listening and uh, I'll have to pick this back up again because I, I just have to get over that yeah. anxiety inducing <laughs> thing yeah. I have about too many titles, I guess. And you don't even need to like read read no, but they all sound good oh, they they all, that's the thing they yeah. all sound good that's why i mean all yeah. these great canadian authors and i get so excited about it and i will say that that was the thing that was the most what do i want to say the thing that helped me find canadian authors was listening to sheila rogers because mm -hmm. it inter introduced me to so many amazing authors and that's how i got my just passion for canadian lit can lit yeah she's done so much for Canadian authors. She's amazing. You're up. My first podcast is NPR's Book of the Day. And again, what I love about this is it's only about, say, seven to 20 minutes long. They literally just tell you about the book of the day and they will chat with the author. And it's very short. It gives you just that perfect hint of what the book is. And actually the trees is where I, I heard about mm. the trees on this uh, podcast when it came out. And so I love that it's brief. It's one author, one interviewer, down and dirty, explaining why I want to read that book. It tells me exactly what I want to know and doesn't give away too much and gives you enough that it grabs your interest. So I love that. And when I go for a walk, I just let them run on whatever the thing is where it just, the next one just runs and runs and runs. And then that way, so for my whole walk, I'd, I don't know how many I listen to, but I love that podcast. That's my, that's my, probably my favorite one. So heads up listeners, we have very different tastes <laughs> aside from yep. that we both enjoy <laughs> book podcasts as yeah. far as like, Rebecca likes them short and sweet, snappy. Yes. I like a nice, like, hour-long podcast. Sign me up. Like, I have no problem hour, hour and a half. I'm in for it. I have no problem. Rebecca, hard pass. Yeah. I, I just, you know, I have a short attention span. <laughs> and no, I really, as you all, every, everybody knows this by now, if you've listened to any of these, any, any of our podcasts, it's true. But yeah, I, I just like, just give me a hint and I'll move from there. I'll grab it. I'll move from there. But yeah, I don't know. I really have great admiration for all of you like Tara who can listen to that, a really, really long podcast and really get all the information. For me, it's just a little bit overload. So, okay. What's your next one? Okay. My next one is a, actually I have the next three I have are all American. Oh, I know. So this was also the next one is What Should I Read Next with Ann Bogle. I oh, yeah. think this is like a classic American one. I've been listening to this one for years as well. Ann's wonderful. She's got a great voice. Each episode, she interviews one reader. So she has like a process where you can, uh, you apply basically to be oh, on her show. Yeah. I didn't know that. You apply like you and I, we could apply to be on her show. And if you're accepted, you get like this conversation with her in which you tell her three of your favorite books, your least favorite book or like one book that did not work for you and mm -hmm. what you're currently reading. And then she gives you three book recommendations for what you should read next. Oh, no, I would listen to that. That yes. would be really fun. Oh, I have like you that. not listened to Anne? I think I did when I first, yeah, it was when I first started on Instagram with this account, which was 2019. I think I did listen to her a little bit at that time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cause she always, her, her guests are very diverse, like in terms of like demographics, but also in the type of books that they read and stuff like this. So there's, I find there's always something different. Yeah. And even if I don't like all of the books that uh, a guest has read or will be recommend or the recommendations there's bound to be like one or two that I find interesting you know and sometimes I also just really like listening to what other readers read and how they read right that's another good one that's an excellent one so my next one is the New York Times the book review podcast so if you just type in the book review it will come up although obviously we will link to all of these in the show notes but as a librarian, you know, I used to sort of regularly review the New York Times, the book review in paper back in the old days. 
and they have a podcast. And I'll be honest, I started out listening to it and then I've fallen by the wayside, but I was looking at it again and I thought, yeah, I want to pick it up again because this one is just that longer version. So they're usually about a half hour podcast again, where they're talking about a book and, and, an author and I, which I really love. That's kind of probably my favorite thing. But I realized when I started looking to prepare for this podcast, I was like, oh my God, like I've been way off of that one. So, but I do want to recommend it because they are the best of the best American mm-hmm. books and authors that they're talking about. So if you really are stuck for a great title, I would definitely take a look at that. And I realize a lot of our listeners are Canadian uh, um, Canadian listeners and may just sort of more emphasize Canadian literature, but obviously these are a couple of us podcasts I was talking about. So, well, I like listening to American ones because I find I get lots of Canadian book recommendations just from the different sources that I, you know, that I have Mm -hmm. going, but I don't know much about American lit. So it's nice to have these American podcasts that just I'll hear about like a, you know, a, you know, a popular book or like a, a literary American author that's not on my, radar kind of thing. So I I like listening to them. Yeah. And I especially like when they'll have like a new author, a new American author, and then they'll talk to them because it's somebody who's just maybe first published and you're kind of jumping on that bandwagon, like right at the beginning. Right. So I kind of like that too, because sometimes it feels overwhelming to go back and try to pick up a lot of books that somebody's already written. And I just love that new fresh voice and kind of jumping on and reading their books first. So so again, I got, I, you know, it was so funny when I found trees through this process, this podcast process. But what was so funny is when I looked him up as an author, he'd already written like 22 books. I and I was like, how in the world had I never heard of Percival Everett? Like, yeah. I just don't know how he was never on my radar. But anyway. Well, he's there now. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm bringing next, uh, currently reading with Meredith and Katie. So those are two American readers again. And they just, if you want a podcast that's going to recommend a lot of uh, more popular American reads, although they do bring in some Canadian books too. I'm always excited when they bring in, bring a Canadian book to their show, Uh, but more uh, popular books, mysteries, thrillers, horror. Uh, One of the hosts, Meredith is a big Louise Penny fan. So I enjoy that. And she has, they have like a little side episodes in which they're going through and rereading the Three uh, Three Pines books and doing a deep dive into that. So I really enjoy that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I get lots of recommendations here for my horror mystery thrillers. And they're just fun to listen to. Yeah, I think I've listened a little bit to them uh, in the past. I think I have. And I think it was because of your recommendation. I did listen to them, I think, a few times. Yeah. I want to mention one that is no longer active and it shows there's only 10 episodes. I looked it up on Podbean and on iTunes and there are only 10 episodes and I know there were way more than that, but I just want to mention it because when I went back and looked up sort of why there are no more new episodes, he made a comment that I want to just throw out there uh, in a couple of ways. So the title of the podcast is and was, uh, what are, what are you reading? And it's W H A T apostrophe R E. So what are you reading by, and it was Kyle Johnson and Kyle Mm -hmm. Johnson was a really thoughtful reader. He read a, just a wide variety. Well, I should say he still does. I mean, he's still alive, but you know, (laughs) he, he reads across every genre. It doesn't matter. It could be highbrow, lowbrow. It was, could just be anything And his podcast he would have one guest and it was often his friends or acquaintances or people that he respected, like in social media that he maybe would invite them to be on his show. And he would literally say, what are you reading? And they would talk about that one book and what was fascinating. And this is the one I religiously listened to. And I, when I was walking and they would last about a half hour. And so he, the books could just be like this bizarre cross section of old books. Somebody talked about a coffee book one time and made it sound so fascinating that I thought I need to look at this coffee table (laughs) book. It was just so weird. But anyway, I love that because it was just two people chatting about some obscure, and I, I shouldn't say obscure as in not known because 
I mean, I think one was Lord of the Rings, one of the books in the Lord of the Rings series. But I just love to hear people talk about something that they're passionate about. And so I just love that. Now, unfortunately, Kyle, at the end of December of 22, he decided to just go off social media. So he had 70,000 followers on TikTok. And he explained that he went off because he said TikTok especially, or book talk especially, was becoming very toxic. Mm. And I thought, how interesting that he, and he said, I was, I found myself reading to do this social media thing yeah. and I wasn't enjoying my reading and I wanted to kind of break away and go back to the way I used to just love to read. And I thought that was really kind of fascinating about, because I do think from my and I watch a lot of TikTok. I do think book talk does seem pretty toxic. There are a lot of things, that ups and downs, and people are fighting left and right and everything. It seems very toxic to me. I kind of feel like Instagram is still, or Bookstagram is still pretty okay. Like I don't mm-hmm. necessarily see big blowups of things, So, which I do appreciate that. And I also want to say that, you know, when we when I started doing this podcast four years ago, and Tara's been at it now for two years with me, I still do it because it's fun and I don't feel any obligation. Now we do not have 70,000, you know, followers yeah. <laughs> on our accounts combined for everything. And I think maybe I like that. And I hope that we never get so big that we ever feel pressure or stress from it all. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Don't you agree? Oh, totally. Yeah. So anyway, I just wanted to bring it up because I miss Kyle. I miss Kyle's show. You can go back and at least listen to 10 of them that are still available. Uh, I don't know what his original platform was. So I don't know if they're they're all living somewhere else. I don't know. Uh, but I do want to say that if anyone is listening to a podcast where it is one person, one person talking to another person about one book, Please make that recommendation to me because that is what I love more than anything. So he's not even on Instagram. He's not on TikTok anymore. He's off the whole thing. Yeah, because he did the same thing. All of it was linked. So the podcast was linked to his TikTok, which was linked to his Bookstagram account. And everything stopped in December. And he said he would come back and do some lives here and there. But I, I... if honestly, if if you're not consistent because of the algorithm, I'm not going to see you anyway. So I yeah. I had to go back and look him up, and I knew he wasn't publishing anything new for a long time. Obviously, almost a year now at this point, or ten good ten months. Uh, he's still alive, but he's just not. He's just reading for his own personal enjoyment. He's enjoying not being on social media. Yeah, exactly. Thought that was fascinating. So anyway. Okay, I'm bringing out another one that I think this podcast I've been listening to for several years and may have the best tagline of Mm. any podcast I know. So it's the Book Cougars with Chris and Emily who discuss books and literary adventures. And I swear these are Rebecca's doppelgangers sometimes because (laughs) one of them is now a librarian and they love going to uh, like obscure little museums and they love traveling anyways and their tagline is two middle-aged women on the hunt for a good read and then they always do a wow at the end of it. I, just, <laughs> I love it but I just I enjoy hearing about their literary adventures because they go to a lot of book talks in the U.S. or book readings uh, they'll go to different libraries around the U.S. and visit them and they do author interviews. So I just really, I, I enjoy what they bring to uh, the podcast world. It's entertaining, but informative. And it's funny too, because they're, you told me about them repeatedly, you told me. Yes. And I listened to some of them, but again, they do, they'll do like an hour, hour and a half of oh, a podcast. Yeah. yeah. And that is just too long for me personally. However, they also have a YouTube channel and I want to mm-hmm. give them a shout out for the YouTube channel because I have watched their YouTube uh, yeah. videos. Now they do the same thing we do, which they'll shift the audio ones over to YouTube. And like I said, they're just a little too long for me, but the shorter ones I've listened to and they are, they're fabulous. And in fact, it makes me, I'm so jealous of them because I thought, you know, I wish I had a book cougar friend, you know, middle-aged mm-hmm. woman who lived like they live in this, they must live in the same place because they, yeah. tr- they videotape together 
and they travel together. So I'm like, I yeah. want a middle-aged lady friend who I, I could travel with. I'm so, your middle-aged book cougar. We're just too far apart. We're too far apart. I know, yeah. exactly. So I'm like, and you go to so many great events because you live in you know the greater Toronto area and you have access to so many events and author visits and all that stuff. And I don't necessarily have that. But I would, if I had a friend like that, I'm like, man, I would so do that. So wow. if there's anybody in the Michigan area, you know, like uh, the Flint area kind of uh, extended out, you know, I'll yeah. travel. Rebecca is a middle-aged woman on the hunt for a fellow book cougar. Yes. Essentially is what it is. That is what I'm looking for. Thank you so much. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) But I do want to give the shout out to the book cougars too, because they do, they seem like really warm, lovely women and they're just so entertaining. And yes, yes, and I am following them on YouTube now. So yes. Awesome. Yay. Okay. Uh, Who's next? I got, we kind of did both did that one. You got something else? Uh, I do, but um, I think you're next technically, but because I think you still have more podcasts you listen to or no, is that all of them? I have two more. Okay. I might throw a surprise one at the end that I thought of while we're doing this. Good. Okay. Keep going. Um, Okay. So I'll do the next one. So my next two are podcasts in which you can actually listen to a short story. So it's not. Yes. And you're going to know this one as soon as I say it. So the first one is Backstage at the Vinyl Cafe, which are live recordings of Stuart McLean reading his books. Stuart McLean passed away, I believe it was in 2016, but this is the podcast started up about within the last year. And it is hosted by Jess Milton, who was his producer at the time. And she introduces each story, gives a little background, and then also gives little um, behind the curtain tidbits about life touring or working with Stuart. And it's Mm -hmm. just a, if you just like lovely stories that make you feel good and laugh, then this, you got to be listening to this one. I almost put that one down and I thought you might bring it. So I didn't because you're the one that introduced me to Stuart McLean. I didn't know who he was. And so for our American listeners, if you don't know him, he's kind of like our Garrison Keillor and Lake Wobegon, that those same beautiful homespun stories of characters that you grow to love and Yeah, it's, I listened to this one too. It's fabulous. I agree. Yeah. That's a great one to give. Thank you. Well, you thought of it too. Yeah. One for both of us. Exactly. Okay. My next one, I just want to mention, this is our good friend, Jolene, who on YouTube is Bookworm Adventure Girl, also on Bookstagram. Now I'm just going to say this, and I love Jolene, but I am sad that Jolene doesn't do as much on Bookstagram anymore because her, her real push has been her a YouTube channel, which she's got, I looked it up today and she's like over a thousand subscribers on her YouTube her. channel. Yeah. yeah. And so, and I will say, I wish, and I don't, I looked it up. I think in order to download the videos, you have to pay like a monthly pay subscription thing for YouTube. And I'm just, I got too many subscriptions as it is. I'm not going to do that. But so I, sometimes I forget to watch uh, Jolene's videos, but when I do, I always enjoy them. She always does these really kind of fun, interesting ones about that. Somebody will tag her on a challenge of some sort, and then she'll respond to it. And I watched one today and it was about how do you rate books? And it had, and it had all these questions. I think there were like nine questions and she answered each one according to her preferences, et cetera. And I I thought that was really interesting as well. So I love when she does those videos and I do need to get back. I've just been away from a lot of stuff lately, but um, I want to get back to watching her videos because they are really interesting. So shout out to our good friend, Jolene. And I'm sure you, our listeners, probably have listened to her i'm sure they're subscribers to her her uh channel but if not bookworm adventure girl yeah she's prolific and she's been on the show oh a lot right a lot in, yeah because in canada reads she's always one joins us yeah exactly so that's why i say we i do i am sad that she's not on bookstagram as much because i really love to read her content there but you know it's just I think she's just having so much more success and yeah. fun and just really knocking it out of the park over on YouTube. She so really I totally, is. Yeah. yeah, I totally get why she's shifted over. So, yeah. 
Okay, what's next? Okay, this time I'm bringing LeVar Burton Reads. Have you oh, listened yeah. to this? Yeah, this is just, oh, his voice, right? Yep. It's LeVar Burton of like Roots, Star Trek Next Generation, yeah. The Reading Rainbow. Each episode, he just reads a short story. They're like high caliber, often like sci-fi or speculative fiction short stories. He's a beautiful reader. He has great taste in short stories. It's just, I really enjoy this one as well. But is that, do you have to pay for that? Nope. That, that how, how did I miss that? I mean, I knew he had a, a podcast, but I thought it was one that you had to pay for the content. Like it was behind a paywall. It's not, huh? No, no. Oh. No, unless he's got something else like that. You can also have further, like, but the, to just listen to the short story. No, it's free. I'm yeah. on that one then, because I have to tell you when I was in high school, Roots came out when I was still in high school. I think it came out, I want to say it was 76 or something like, anyway, I was in high school. I had the biggest crush on him. I'm not kidding. I just thought he was so gorgeous and he was such a great young actor. Yeah. And he has just turned out to be what a career path for him with the reading and just his passion for literacy and stuff. I mean, he's just a phenomenal human being. So yeah. And it all comes through in when he reads, like in this podcast, it's just there. That's so cool. All right. That's so cool. Okay. Well, my last one is a podcast. I think in terms of delivery, I think this is my favorite podcast. I mean, a YouTube channel in the sense that I wish I had his ability to communicate what I want to say as effectively as he does. And it's the Poptimist. Mm. So it's P-O-P-T-I-M-I-S-T. But he just, I, I, I don't even know how to explain it, but he doesn't look like he's reading off a script or anything. And it's not like he's looking up and he's always staring like at a teleprompter or mm-hmm. he's looking down, looking at a piece of paper. But this man, I think there are very few people in the world who just have the ability to communicate what they're trying to say so well with no stumbles. And it's also really a deep analysis of what he's trying to say. You know what I mean? Have you ever watched him before? I don't think so. Yeah. And he's the one that one book that I loved uh, that I read in January of this year, uh, how high we go in the dark or something like that. I can't remember the title of it now. He's the one that had said well, this was going to be his best read of 23 or whatever, blah, mm. blah, blah. And so I went, really? So I read that book and I loved it. It's, it's, yeah. It was linked to short stories. I loved it. Uh, but he also kind of started to say he was going to just sort of take a break from social media. So I went back and I looked kind of to see how he did through the whole year. And it was really because he was kind of off for like two or three months where he really didn't have any content. He's also on bookstagram, but he's a, I think a whiskey drinker and a a cigar smoker. So he posts mostly that on his, uh, his Instagram account now, but his podcast, I mean, his YouTube channel, I would say it's probably about once a month. It looks like consistently for the last, I don't know, six or seven months. So I would say just listen to him because like I said, I, I hang on every word. I just think he's so fascinating. And I wish I had that capacity for communication, being articulate and getting out what you want to say without Mm. this blah, blah that I do, you know? (laughs) So he's my, he's who I aspire to be, but he is who I will never be because I think that's got to be a born talented kind of, you know, you're like, you're born that way or something. And he's your Sheila. He's your Sheila. He is my Sheila. Yes. Thank yes. you. You're right. Awesome. Yeah. That's a great, that is a great thing. Cause I agree yeah. with you. Yeah. I know you've mentioned him, but I haven't watched anything because I don't watch YouTube. The only booktuber that I um, watch is Jolene. Yeah. Cause I'm more of a audio person. So, okay. I have one more nasty little podcast that I got to bring. I'm so sorry, Rebecca. You but said I have- nasty? Oh, nasty. <laughs> It's nasty, but I have to bring it. I can't not bring it because when I think of podcasts, I got to bring it. So apologies and warnings to all of those out there listening. Okay. One of my all-time favorite podcasts, and I think it's now over now, except for occasional, they do little special ones every few months or so lately. 
is my dad wrote a porno. Have you? Do? No, I've never. <laughs> Have you heard never? Of this? Never, no. Rebecca. I've never okay. heard of this. Oh my gosh, I've told. <laughs> I've actually gone to see them live in concert. Like oh. I love them so much. Okay, they're three British people. Mm-hmm. Who's uh, one of them? His father retired. He's uh, actually his father's Irish. And when he retired, he started writing erotic literature and self-publishing it. <laughs> and one day, I think the story goes, his son got it, to, got it in his head that he's going to invite two of his friends over and read the, liter- the, the porn to oh them. Gosh. And just like they're going to do a podcast of him reading. So he's reading his own dad's porn <laughs> while his friends react to it. And it is the funniest thing I've ever listened to. I love it. It's like nasty porn. Yeah. It's not well written. It's so, a lot of it doesn't even make sense. But it is so delightful to hear well cuz it's so outrageous and to hear them reacting to it cuz they're three good friends and it's just their chemistry is amazing. I, I had to bring it. I, I didn't have it down on my page and like midway through, I'm like, what, why have I not put this written down? I'm like, I got to bring this. So if you want to laugh and you don't mind listening to explicit sexual descriptions. Yeah. My dad wrote a porno. Okay. Now is dad ever on the show or is dad know, does dad know they do that? Yes. Dad knows. Oh, dad's oh made a lot gosh. of money off of this. Cause you can, uh, well, they've made a whole career out of it. Wow. They were touring, right? They came to Canada and the U.S. pre-COVID and did tours and stuff like this. <laughs> oh, uh, so yes, I, he made money off of it. He is behind the scenes. I think he goes by the name Rocky Flintstone, so they ne- he never <laughs> shares his real name. <laughs> but you can buy his actual books on Amazon. And uh, yeah. Okay. Are they poorly written though? Are they like bad? Like Oh, laughable? no, they're bad. They're, they're really bad. bad. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. God. They're bad. It's all because they're so bad. Oh my gosh. Like, Cause I'm not, I don't read erotic literature. I'm too prudish, but yet I listen to this. Isn't that weird? <laughs> and it's so ridiculous. I'm like, bring it on when it's like taken seriously. I'm like, take it away. But I'm like, yeah, it's I'm just the same so way. Ridiculous. Yeah. It's yeah, so I- much fun though. If you just need to laugh, if you're just, you want to laugh Warning, if you're driving, maybe don't listen to it because it is that funny. Okay, I think we gave some really great examples. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and we hope that you found something in there that you would really enjoy. And we hope that you will comment and let us know which ones you really love. They can be book related. They could be fun ones. Uh, we're up for everything. Yeah, happy reading and happy listening. Thank you for joining us on our bookish journey. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider subscribing, rating, and reviewing Canada Reads American Style wherever you listen. You can connect with the podcast and Rebecca on Instagram at Canada Reads American Style and with Tara at On a Branch Reads. Until next time, keep reading.